Benishai. We're here at the Baked by Melissa headquarters today. I am making you bite-sized double stuffed macarons and I can't wait to show you what goes into them because there's a whole lot of love. So first I'm going to start with the three basic ingredients which is almond flour and uh, confectioner sugar and egg whites. So the first thing you have to do, because macarons are very temperamental and they're not nice to you all the time, you have to weigh out all of your ingredients and it really has to be perfect. Usually I use measuring cups and I'm a little like whatever, but when you're dealing with macarons, you use a scale and you go by the gram. So I measured 165 grams of almond flour and 165 grams of confectioner sugar and I took a pinch of salt because salt makes everything better and I put them into the sifter and I actually started to sift it all and now we're going to make sure we have a beautiful homogeneous mixture and that's going to be the base of your batter and what we're doing is we're trying to eliminate all of the bigger grains from the sugar and the almond flour so your batter is beautiful and smooth because that's what makes for a great macaron. You can see there are some little pebbles left in the in the strainer. We're not going to use them. Strainer, whatever it's called. <laughs> All right. So we have the flour mixed with the sugar, and the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to beat 115 grams, which is actually just half a cup of egg whites. And it's super important that the egg whites are at room temperature when you beat them because that's what makes the magic of the macro. So. I'm going to add it to the mixer, but before I start mixing it, I'm actually going to combine the last three ingredients, which is caster sugar, and caster sugar is just a finer ground of granulated sugar, again, so your batter is very silky and smooth and you get that shine on top of the macaron. Uh, powdered egg whites, get it all in there and cream of tartar. It's about a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar and a tablespoon of powdered egg whites. The powdered egg whites are so light and fluffy, it's like five grams actually. So with my hands and my gloves, of course, I'm just gonna mix it up so everything is together. There we go. And that's going to get added to the room temperature egg whites after I start whipping them for like, like a minute maybe. Oh, that's such a nice noise. So once everything, there you go, that's so much better. Once everything starts to mix together, that's when you could add the sugar. And what you're going to get, I'm just going to stop it while I add. And we're gonna whip all of this together on high until you get this beautiful meringue-like silky stiff piece. It takes about five to eight minutes, but you really do still by the way it looks. And once it becomes like mountains of snow, that are really stiff, you get to go. So while that's happening, I feel like I should tell you guys what flavors we're gonna make. Okay. The batter is going to be our salted caramel macaron, which is my personal favorite, so that's why I chose to make it for you today. They're chocolate, light chocolate macaron shells. We put a little bit of cocoa powder to get the caramel color, so it's not really for the taste, it's more for the color. And then we put a little bit of yellow food coloring. We stuff it with dolce de leche, a chocolate ganache, because all baked by Melissa macarons have two components in the middle, they're double stuff, and we top it with, of course, sea salt. So that's what we're making here. It's one of these, right? It is that guy! Can you see him? Wait, yeah. hold on. Ready? Look, first of all, look at how soft and delicious this macaron is. And I don't know if you can see, there's a little hint of chocolate in the middle. It's literally melts in your mouth. Fantastic. <laughs> I can't control myself around these 
done. <laughs> so I'm not even going to tempt myself right now. After we finish making the batter, I'm going to assemble two other fan favorites of our bite-sized double stuffed macarons, but really they're all amazing, so it was hard to choose. We have Snickerdoodle, which is like a sugar cookie with cinnamon in the middle. That's exactly what it is. We stuff it with our sugar cookie dough, and we then add a little dollop of cinnamon in the middle, and then we have our sugar cookie macaron, which is filled with sugar cookie and of course rainbow nonpareils because they're beautiful and they really give you the sugar cookie experience. We're almost ready. And then we can shut this off because it's really loud. <laughs> So take a look. You see how beautiful that is? Looks amazing. It looks amazing. I think we're almost ready. I'm gonna test it. Ready? So the trick for when you know you have stiff teeth is. Oh, I don't know. You take the bowl and you turn it over. See, there it is. Those are some stiff peaks. <laughs> and that's how you know your egg white sugar mixture is done and ready for the almond flour and confectioner sugar. So I'm gonna add it to the bowl. And now the trick with these delicious and not always so nice cookies is that you have to fold the batter together until it becomes a very specific consistency, which is most often described as lava-like. And what that means is that when you hold up your spatula, you get an even ribbon of batter that flows down. And that's when you know that your batter is ready to pipe. Since I'm adding a little bit of color to the batter, I'm actually going to do that right now before it's done. A little bit of cocoa and a little bit of yellow food coloring. I have a measuring problem. I like to eye everything. So. You prefer gel to liquid food coloring? I 100% prefer gel to liquid. I think you get a much brighter, fun color with a lot less and when you're making things and you're following very specific measurements, it's really important that you're not changing the consistency, which liquid often does. Food coloring. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this. And we're on our way to our salted caramel macaron shell. Another trick with macarons is once you assemble the cookies, what I found is that it's super important to actually leave them in the refrigerator overnight because that's what gets you this perfect consistency that when you take a bite, it's like it cracks and it's cake-like in the middle and then you have the gooey filling. Oh, it's so good. I thought cupcakes were my favorite dessert and then I made macarons and macarons became one of my favorite desserts. It's a good problem to have, I guess. You can also do this in your standing mixer, which I'll show you because it'll speed up the process a little bit. We're just dropping everything. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we have another one. There we go. Somebody actually asked, are you really live? So this is the proof. We're really live. We're dropping everything. And if we <laughs> weren't, so you could actually do this in your KitchenAid or even using a hand mixer. The trick is to just do it on as low as you can. And this is actually gonna allow me to match the color and talk to you without getting out of breath because it's not, it's, you know, going like this is a great arm workout. When we first started Baked by Melissa, my arms were so toned because I was icing and depositing batter for every single cupcake and it was really like the best shape I've ever been and now I have to work harder at it. Also super important when you're baking is to scrape down the edges because you want to make sure that everything is fully incorporated. But see how the batter is coming off? That's the ribbon that we're looking for. So we're almost done. Almost lava-like. 
Not quite there yet. Michelle just joined. She wants to know what you're making right now. Hi, Michelle. We are making bite-sized double-stuffed macarons. This is the shell for our salted caramel flavor. We're going to take them out in a second and deposit it onto the Silpat mat so we can put them in the oven and do the fun part, which is assembling it. Let's see. Almost, but see the ribbon. Maybe one more minute and then we're going to be ready to go. I think it's time for the glove change. So I really, I always loved macarons. I always liked macarons, but they weren't fun, I thought. You know, like the flavors didn't really satisfy my, my, my craving when it comes to dessert. I like to keep it fun and I like for fla to pick flavors that bring you back to your childhood. So, I was so excited to have the opportunity to introduce Baked by Melissa Bite Size Double Stuffed Macarons to everyone because I, feel, I really think it reflects what your dessert experience should be. Nicole wants to know, is it possible to over mix this? It is possible, which is why I keep stopping and, and doing this. Almost. See, it's not, it's almost a perfect ribbon, but it's dripping and it's not smooth. So. When we did this at Baked by Melissa, I had only made macarons a couple of times, so I had to spend a lot of time in my kitchen making this batter. And I had the time, like I used, I would sit there with a stopwatch, and I learned exactly how long every step of the process needed to take. And depending on how big the batch is, depends on how long your timing is. So for you today, I'm making a smaller batch because we're here in our test kitchen. So when I make them for everyone and for the stores in our bakery, it's a little different. Shonda wants to know, is there any saving it if you ever mix it, or is it a garbage batter? I would start over. It took, it took me a lot of tries to get these macarons perfect, and it's really all about the consistency. And then once you get the consistency right, and you deposit them on the mat, you have to let them stay out at room temperature to develop what we call a skin. And that skin is what becomes shiny. All right, here we go. Let me take this out so you can see. There. Caramel colored. And if you pick it up, you see it's just an even ribbon, lava-like consistency. So now we're going to deposit them onto the mat. This is one of my favorite parts. I love repeat tasks. I find it very therapeutic. I think that's why I love baking so much. It's like arts and crafts. And you can your project. There's kind of nothing better. Uh, at Big Bad Mosa, we have six flavors of macarons, all takes on my favorite desserts and flavor combinations that remind me of my childhood and just having fun. We have red velvet, we have double chocolate, sprinkles and sea salt, oh, it's so good. I almost made that one for you today too, but I had to pick just three. Okay, put in the pastry bag, and now we're just going to deposit little circles and this is where you get to have fun with it you can decide what size you want I like my desserts just to bite obviously so I make them small it's important to be consistent I find that using an icing tip really helps with the consistency and the round shape and the more you do it the easier it is and the more consistent you get Cassidy wants to know, do you have a favorite dessert to bake? Is this it? This is definitely one of my favorite desserts to bake. It's a commitment though. You really need to stay with it. You can't really leave the batter alone until you're completely done. But I think that's super fulfilling. I really like to challenge myself in the kitchen. And when I first made macarons, it was a challenge. Now I've gotten used to it. Rachel says you make it look so easy. Oh, thank you, Rachel. I've made them a few, a few times, so. 
So after you get the batter deposited, and you have enough for probably two mats, but we're only gonna do one, it's really important to give it a bang on the counter. And what that does is it gets all the air bubbles out. If you really want like a perfect finish and you have some tails like I have, you could actually just run your finger under water and just flatten out the tops so they're perfectly flat. But as they sit, it'll happen naturally as well. So you have the macaron batter on the mat. You're gonna let it sit out for 30 to 45 minutes. And what that's gonna do is it's going to dry out the top layer. It's called a skin that you're gonna get on top of the cookie. And that skin is going to allow for a foot. So a foot is this. You see how you have the skin that forms before it goes into the oven. And then when you put it into the oven, you get the foot. And I remember trying to get this foot. It took me a while, and when I got feet, I was so excited. <laughs> I think one of my friends called it legs, and I thought it was really funny. Okay, so these are going to sit out now for 30 to 45 minutes, but since we're live, and I really want you guys to see the whole process, I went ahead and I baked some ahead of time. Lisa wants to know, did you use a tip when you were piping those out? I did use a tip. I uh, think it was like a half inch or, circle. yeah, like a half inch circle. Again, you could use anything. If you use a smaller tip, you just have to deposit the batter for a longer amount of time. So these came out of the oven earlier. They're perfectly cool and delicious, <laughs> but we'll wait and see. For the baked by Melissa salt and caramel macaron, we actually have a chocolate drizzle on one of the cookies, so I have to be authentic, and I'm going to make that chocolate drizzle for you. I also just really enjoy doing drizzles because it's, again, just like... Repeat task, very therapeutic, makes me feel good. I'm gonna snip the tip and it's a very thin stream of chocolate. And just on half of them, I'm gonna do a little drizzle. And while we're waiting for them to cool, I'm gonna do the really fun part, which is stuff them. So, Salted caramel calls for dolce de leche. You can make your own using sweetened condensed milk and boiling it for like three hours, or you could buy it in the supermarket, which I find even easier, and put it into a pastry bag. You don't necessarily have to use a tip, but I like everything super symmetrical, so when I make the dollop in the middle of the cookie, it's a perfect circle. So. The salted caramel macaron is dolce de leche with chocolate ganache in the middle and a sprinkle of coarse sea salt. You guys, I can't I like I can't even begin to tell you how amazing it is. But look at that. Perfect. Can you taste it? Look at how shiny it is, amazing. So I'll make a couple more so you can see the technique and then we'll move on to another flavor. So Kurt and Judy have never tasted a macaron before. They ask if it's cookie-ish or cake-ish. How would you describe the, the taste? The taste is a combination of both actually it's cookie and cake and that's why it's so amazing and it's delicious and it's also gluten-free so for my gluten-free friends I make macarons because they think they're organically gluten-free which says something for the dessert itself you're not trying to take something that's not and make it something that's not naturally not naturally meant to be um, when you first bite into the macaron it's like eating a cookie and you get kind of a crack but then once you pass that skin layer that you put the, cup, the macarons at room temperature for, it's kind of like, like 
soft and cakey and, and moist, which I hate using that word, but it really is. And then you have the stuffing, which is whatever you want it to be. Again, why I love macarons, because I like chocolate and caramel and red velvet and sugar cookies and snickerdoodles, so I decided to make macarons like that. But if you like green tea, then you could do that, or you can really do anything with it. If you don't want to make your own fillings and you want to go to the supermarket and troll the aisles, which is really fun, by the way, and see what they have, you can do that too. You could fill them with fudge or peanut butter. Oh my gosh, peanut butter and fluff, which is one of my personal favorites that we don't even have at Baked by Melissa. But I've made it and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So really like be creative and do things, use ingredients that you and your loved ones love to eat and that's what makes them special and that's why you can do anything that you feel like in the kitchen. It's also really important to have a nice balance of, of flavors, which is why I like to have two stuffings because the cookies themselves are actually a little sweet. I find that using the chocolate ganache and the sea salt with the, with the dolce de leche really gives you a nice balance of flavor. And when you add sea salt to anything, it's kind of like a dance on your tongue. It's like, it really kicks up the whole experience. So, Especially when you're working with sweet, I highly recommend using sea salt and putting a little bit, a little bit goes a long way and it really makes all the difference. <clears throat> Guys, I really want to eat one of these right now. <laughs> I'm going to wait. A little coarse sea salt. Yum. When did you introduce this to the menu? And we introduced bite-sized double sub macarons to the menu January 2016. And there we go. Salted caramel. They're like the best sandwich you could ever have. <laughs> and since they're just a bite, you could have a bunch without the post dessert guilt trip. <laughs> we also ship our product nationwide, which makes it possible for anyone to get baked by Melissa. We have muffins, cupcakes, and double stuffed macarons. I don't have a lot of patience, therefore I do not wait for the drizzle to completely dry, but that's okay. Wow, I just eyed it and I did exactly half. Okay, cool. So, there are the salted caramel macarons. And now, I'm gonna do two other flavors for you. Sugar cookie dough is one of my favorite things. So I found a way to use it a bunch of different ways. We use it as the filling in our sugar cookie macaron, but we also use it in, as the filling in my snickerdoodle macaron. We just add cinnamon to it at the end, and it's a completely different flavor. And actually, the these two flavors are two of our more popular ones. So, sugar cookie, Oy. runaway sugar cookie, is, this filling is actually my favorite sugar cookie dough recipe, but I don't use eggs, of course, and I add heavy cream to get the right consistency. Uh, Rick wants to know what temperature did you bake the macaroons at? 300 degrees. You want to bake your macarons at a very low temperature and give them time to do their thing. And at about three or four minutes in is when you should see the foot. 
And if you see that foot, you're doing well. The macarons are sometimes they're like a bitch a little bit. Okay. And then the fun part. A little bit of rainbow nonpareil. So this way when you bite into the sugar cookie macaron, you get a little rainbow, which makes it beautiful and fun. And then the snickerdoodle is going to get a little bit of cinnamon. And this is one of my favorite things. I like to spread it on toast, actually. <laughs> It's just cinnamon, a little bit of butter, and a little bit of sugar. And it's so fun when you bite into one of these that has the dollop of something in the middle, it looks like a little bullseye. How long did you cook these for in the oven? Nine minutes. It could, it could be anywhere from nine to 11 minutes at 300, but it also depends upon your oven. And like this oven here in my test kitchen, I like to do it at 305 degrees, but in the bakery, it's a true 300 degrees. So you really have to feel it out and, and know what your oven is like. It's also good to have a thermometer in your oven so you know the exact temperature and if you need to bump it up, you can. I love these, they're so pretty. Yum. Hey guys. <laughs> so macarons kind of are simple, but I think if it's your first time baking, just really follow the directions. That's what I did. And I find that when you follow the directions on a recipe, it helps a lot. And then the second time you make it, you can be a little free and really interpret it and make it your own. Cool. Can you tease what we're going to do in the next segment? In the next segment, we're going to make my favorite cupcake flavor today, which is the March Mini of the Month. So you're going to get an exclusive first look at our Italian rainbow cookie cupcake. It's tie-dye almond flavored cake with green, yellow, and pink. It's stuffed with a strawberry filling, and it's iced with chocolate icing, and it has a rainbow bark, brittle, and it's amazing. And I hope you tune in. Cool, thanks. <laughs>